welcome to Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. It's lovely to see all of you once again. We come to you via virtuality here on our lovely Zoom uh, television show that we have for you. So we have Phil Healy, NorCam Studios Program Coordinator. Yo. He's in the house. Hello. We also have Tom back in the house. Welcome, Tom Smith. Hello. Hello. I think we need to talk about the Celtics first, uh, first and foremost. I know in our last program, before actually we talked about the Celtics, we talked about a lot of issues with uh, Phil and I talked a lot about a lot of philosophical issues that I was having with the stance that players were having with boycotting and all that. We hope that you all enjoyed that show. We are going to be talking strictly today about a little bit of the Bruins, a little bit of the Celtics, seeing how we feel about now a game seven upcoming and obviously we have nfl starting as well this week so we're going to be talking about our outlook on the patriots which is exciting <laughs> uh we're going to also talk about the premier uh game that kicks off on thursday night which is the chiefs and the texans so the first thing that we are going to talk about is the celtics so i don't know about you guys but i am um, I'm pretty ticked off with the Celtics right now. Um, the series should be over, guys. It's Last night, I chucked my remote control against the wall because I was so frustrated with... Wait, wait which part? Uh, the front part, so it's trash. So I had to oh, pick I mean, up a new well, one I'm today. sorry. I mean, which part uh, Which part in the game? So there was a couple um, for me. I almost had like 18 different heart attacks. Uh, my, my most frustrating moment was definitely when Kemba didn't get called for a foul. You know, Kemba should have been oh. at the line shooting for that. Tice with the challenge. Oh, yeah. The rest, I don't like to blame refs for things, but those refs for both sides last night were absolutely <laughs> atrocious. It was the worst officiating I have ever seen in a professional sport in my entire life. Mark Jackson. Oh, always blame the refs. oh what was that, Tom? I'll always blame the refs. It's always <laughs> the refs' fault. Ah. Why not? Hey, it's the NBA, right? Yeah. Um, which, who knows who's gambling when? And you know what? Let's get him on a good gambling night. That's what I say. But, uh, no, Mark Jackson, one of my favorite – actually, one of my favorite Golden State coaches who doesn't get enough credit for getting the Golden State Warriors to where they were before Steve Kerr took over. Yep. But uh, he's a great announcer, and he actually – He's a great announcer. Yeah, he's great. And he said – you probably heard him last night, uh, Nick, talk about how, like, it's a shame how the officiating uh, dictates a game. It's so he, bad. Yeah, and he – he was actually pretty, he was pretty, uh, what's the word, diplomatic about it, but you could hear him in his tone and in between the lines that he was like, yeah, the refs are kind of weirdly calling this game. I mean, to be fair, they let some stuff slide and they let other stuff kind of go, but. There was no consistency, none. Yeah, yeah it was weird, but yeah, I, 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 you know, yeah, Kemba got, I mean, Kemba should have had that layup, but he did get, you know, he didn't get completely, ma you know, manhandled, but he did get, you know. You get hit. What are you going to do? I don't know. I think you should have made it regardless. But we're talking about no, uh, regulation. We're talking about in regulation. That is yeah. correct. Yep. Um, I was pretty ticked off about Jason Tatum's last few games performance. What has gone on with him? I think it's NBA last game, upcoming he, superstar. I, the first two games is great. Where the hell has he been the rest of the series? I actually – Forget his stats for last game, not uh, not yep. for game six, but for game five. I think they were pretty okay. I think they were pretty good for game five. Last night he didn't start out well, but no, he, he did not. He finished the game pretty well. I mean, like he had like something. He like got a big or... time three. He got a big yeah. time three or uh, very very late into that double overtime, which was good. No, but he... his I I thought his perform. I thought the best performer on the court last night was two players. I thought it was Jalen Brown. I thought it was Daniel Tice. I thought those two guys were the biggest contributors last night. And I'll game. throw in a third. Everybody up. else turtled. Oh, go uh, ahead. Well, I don't agree with that. I think Marcus Smart was pretty great in that, too. And I think – uh, yeah. Fred... Well, here's the, here's the problem with Smart is that yeah. we saw what he did in game two. So, that's – uh, that was his best game. So. Oh I mean, yeah, no, he had a pretty great game last night. I would, I would put his game last night against any game he's had in the playoffs. Okay. Uh, yeah, he had okay. A, I could see he it. Had a trip, he had a triple double, and he had, um, he also got them. You know, he got them in a place where they could be up six, but that call got challenged. Not a bad call, a challenge, a good challenge. I mean, as much as you know, 
it wasn't that good of a it wasn't a good call to begin with. And I don't disagree that uh, they made. I think they made the right call by taking it away. I think that was one of the only times last night where it seemed like, oh, that's you know, that was pretty apt. But you know, I don't. Uh, I think they should have went to Tice more down low. I think that's where their bread and butter was, and they should have should have ran it more. E- easier said than done in double overtime. Right. But uh, I think Smart had a great game. But um, I think Jason Tatum, to get back to your earlier point. I think he finished strong. He had like 15 rebounds. I think he had a, a bunch. He was defensively, he was decent, actually more than decent. But it he just had a nice like, block on a play. I did yeah. see one of the blocks he had, which was great. Oh, the trailing block was amazing. There's a bunch of great plays yeah. he had, but that trailing block when he got it, he got pickpocketed, and then he ran back to stop. I think that was in regulation. I forget, or maybe the first. Yes, it was. Time. It was when it was 98, 98, right to oh, the okay. end of the game. So yeah. they said, yeah, yeah. And they had, I mean, they had chances. They had possessions at the end of regulation, and they craw- they clawed back in the fourth quarter. Like it was a good game for them. That just had a you know pretty crappy ending. And give credit to Toronto. They scraped by, and Lowry was amazing. And um, he's also like I hate him. Not in that way. Like you hate like a Martian or a or a smart. Below them. Who hates Martian? Well, yeah. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't wear the, the black and gold. Oh, Tom, uh, welcome back to the show. No. Yeah, yeah. I had to I had to drag him in somehow. Yeah, yeah, conversation. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but no, I like Lowry. I mean, he nails a great, you know, he nails a pretty amazing shot. I think at the end of the second overtime to put him, I think it's, that's when they put him up one or at least put him back up by three or I forget how it was. I think it put him back up three. I forget. I can't. I time is nebulous. Uh, both with COVID and just with that game went on forever. It was it was amazing, but it went on forever, and everyone's so damn tired. But yeah, Tatum. I think he had a. I think he had a better game than uh, I think. Yeah, he was crap at the beginning a bit, and Jalen Brown uh, picked up the slack. And it, uh, as Perk said last night in like the NBC Boston post show, they kind of when he went out of the game with like three or four fouls in like the third. They kind of got away from him, and you had that van, yes. that Van Fleet, or uh, Van uh, Lee. I can't. Van uh, Fleet, yep. Van, van Fleet. Fleet, like that weird, like, oh, he got a three, like he got three shots, and they got the ball. It was such. A, I didn't even know what the foul was. Like I looked away for a second, and apparently, Marcus. I don't Smart, think like, the refs knew what they were calling either. Truthfully, I really don't. It was a big mystery on the whole court. It was definitely, an, it was huh? definitely rigged, in my opinion. Because the NBA wanted a game seven. I think, I don't, you know, rigged or whatever. It, the promos leading up to that game for ESPN were so weirdly pro Toronto. And I don't want to be one of those guys, but it just was so bizarre. And uh, I think game seven is great, but I think it's horrible for the C's if they want to go after Miami. But I think, you know, they should have won. They had their chance. All that being said, they had their chances. They had their chances. They had three chances, game. basically, this series to put it away. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, in this game, but yeah. In the game, too. I mean, they had every chance in the world to win this game. My biggest problem from the game, though, wasn't have to do with the refs. It has to do with the performance of Kemba Walker. What the hell happened to him last night? That was horrible. No, horrible. He had, he had one good shot to put him up by I one. hate it. I hate it that I'm calling him out. But you know what? No, I mean, you came here for a reason, dude. Step the you-know-what up. <laughs> Tom is <laughs> wagging the finger. <laughs> um. No, Sorry, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not in a great mood today, folks. So if I say something, yeah, I'm unfiltered. Sorry. No, it's I. Uh, I don't disagree. This game really, I was. It was entertaining. It was fantastic. Oh, I was. But I hated it. I won't all the same. Away. Like I love it and I hate it. It's just like that one thing. Like took another five wanted. years off my life. Thank yeah, you, of NBA refs. Yep. So. I was texting a buddy of mine, an old college buddy, uh, and we were like going back and forth, like, you know, what the hell is going on? Because we were just trying to navigate through whatever this game was. But it, the seeds just need to, I don't know, they needed to clamp down. And they kind of did. They almost had it. Uh, and they just let it slip away. I thought they were, when that, in the second overtime, when they just, you know, Tatum, you know, dunks off of a, a turnover. And then they go back again, and it's like an alley-oop to Tice. I'm like, okay, they're going to run it. They're going to run over him. They're at, uh, Toronto's out of gas. It's over. But then they kind of slowed it down a little bit. And it's, you know, I don't know. We'll see what so, happens Friday night seven. at 9 for whatever reason. It's at 9 o'clock now. Game 7, uh, guys. Yeah. How are you feeling? 
Ask me on. Ask me next. Yeah, ask me next week. All right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This. This right here. Yeah. So oh yeah. Say. So you think they're gonna win? You think they're gonna Absolutely. get to the next round? Absolutely. Okay. I wouldn't be well, surprised I, if they blew it, but I think they can and should win it. I'm gonna be Debbie Downer. Debbie's in the house today. Not happening, folks. Yeah. 2020. 2020. <laughs> that's how this. That's how that series is gonna go. You had every well, chance in the book, and have, it's blown. And here's another year. hot take from me. Here's another hot take. Celtics lose tomorrow, and bye-bye Brad Stevens. Well, that's a, that's a theory. 34 a and 33 he'll be in his playoff career. Sorry, not acceptable. Oh, wow. Is that really his um... – 34 and 33, not acceptable. That's crazy. He yeah. has to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. With all the talent and all the hype and everything from this year, and you had every chance in the book to beat Toronto this series. If he comes back and he loses it, see you later. Do you think Gordon Hayward plays on Friday? No. No, I don't think he's ready. As much as I want him to play. And believe me, I want the Celtics to win. I am not – I'm not against the Celtics in the least bit. I do want them to win. I want some excitement. I do. I'm sure sure we all do. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Personally, yeah. I, I want to see the Celtics. Baby doesn't agree. Go. My child does not agree. The Celtics, uh, the, 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 Bru- the Bruins are already out. The Red Sox year. are Boston's an absolute have shit show. This year. I, I need, I need to have, I need to have something in my life where I can root for something. And I, I <laughs> actually like, I like the Celtics team. Phil, I'm, one of the things that I so much more like this year is that they're likable. There isn't anybody on this team that drives me insane, and I can root for every single person on this team. And who goes out there and battles night in and night out. But what I can't stand is when you half-ass it. And that was completely half-assed a couple of these games this series. They need to show up tomorrow. They need to get out on the court, get a fast start, and put this game away. I think game – you can make an argument for game four is half-assed. But every other game, yeah. I think, has been there. But I, Well, for, game uh, two, too. Or, no, game three. Game well, game three, three for half a second. Yeah. Uh, but which is like that blew me away because after that Kemba pass, all time pass to Tice, uh, which has been a killer for the Toronto. Toronto has not been able to either double on uh, you know Tatum or Kemba, and then you leave uh, off the pick and roll or just down low, you leave Tice open. They ki- he's been killing them, yep. and that's why that's why I thought they were gonna keep feeding in the second overtime. But you know, hey, you know what? I, I think they're gonna win it. And we'll see what Miami brings, but you know what? Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, I, I could see Toronto doing the same. I could see a, a sequel to last night's game, honestly. But I also, you know, don't, just keep running. I mean, that's what I would say. Keep I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong so bad. Of course. Me, I do. I want to be wrong. I love it when I, if I'm wrong and they prove me right and I'm going to stick with it that I just don't see it. So I want to be wrong, like I said. I hope the Celtics go out and they prove it to all the fans who have stood by them this year that this team is ready and needs to get to that Eastern Conference and take on Miami. And then hopefully they get to the finals. I mean, you're doing it without a Milwaukee. I mean, what other chance are you going to have? It's like the Bruins last year when they didn't have uh, Toronto in the playoffs. Yeah. But I don't think Milwaukee didn't have good. Washington. I mean, well, we beat no, Toronto I didn't think in the Milwaukee. playoffs. Yeah, we did when we beat them. Yeah, nice. so but yeah. we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. And Miami, Miami's going to – if we get to Miami, knock on wood, they'll be a lot tougher than we think. But I think this series is a great test. You it know? is. Yeah, I do too. Can't take Miami lightly at all, folks, because nope. uh, Jimmy Butler's been playing some heck of – some uh, great basketball. So yep. – and, and other players on the team too. I'm just not Jimmy Butler. But I, I do think that Toronto could potentially be tougher than Miami. Just because they're the defending champs, they've been there, they've done that. Miami really hasn't been there, done that yet. So we'll see. Um, any other things on basketball before we turn the page with hockey next? Uh, just there have been some great games. Uh, what we didn't talk about last time, great game seven against Utah and uh, Denver. Uh, great game seven versus um, Houston, Houston and Oklahoma yeah. City. Yeah. And uh, – I think we're gearing up for in the West uh, the uh, lack of a subway series between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Los Angeles Lakers. So very, very interesting series. I yeah, think. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally agree. And I think Houston 
I don't know. We'll see what happens with them. But I kind of want Houston to try to come back. I think they can compete, and I think they can make it. But Lakers have a, a good team. Uh, so do the Clippers. I know we don't like hearing it, but we'll see. Oh, I like the Clippers. I mean, I have more respect for the Clippers than I do the Lakers. So I'd rather see the Clippers myself. Yeah, likewise. I mean, Rondo, it's gonna, you're going to love hearing this. Rondo's having a good series. So. Oh, of course he is. Why, yeah, yeah, yes. why can't we get players like that? It's just, it is, you know, that, that's, wah, wah. that's Boston for you. Yep. So, all right, Tom, let's change it over to uh, the lovely land of NHL. Um, I want to talk about the Bruins uh, stuff first. Phil's going to go tend to his child for a second. Um, Tom, one of the things that the Bruins have not been – uh, hiding any kind of information out there and saying that one of the things, one of the reasons that the Bruins did not have such a great playoff was because of Pasternik and because of uh, Kase. So what, what do you have to say about that? That, the, that they just weren't ready, they weren't up to speed, they were not ready to play hockey. How does that sit with you? Um, well, you could tell Kasha was really ready to play. He wasn't all there. Uh, Pasternak, I think, was too eager to get back into the game and, you know, was still playing with that injury that he had to start off. But, um, I mean, the, the team looked – the team looked a lot better than last year's playoff team for the most part up until the end there. And then they kind of just, I don't know, lost the motivation or something. But they didn't look good at all the last three games for that Tampa series. So what do you do moving forward? What do you do? What do you do with this team? How do you fix it? Can you fix it? Um, yeah. Uh, try to convince Chara to retire. Oh, so you don't want him back. You want Chara out of here. Okay. Uh, what do you do with Rask? What do you do with Rask? A lot of people have their opinions about it. What do you do? I, you know, I would I would sit down with him, have a talk with him, ask him if his head's in it, uh, if it if it's, no, it's heads. not. Well, you don't. I mean, we don't know. We don't know what's going on there. So, I mean, if if his head's not in it, you know. Is he if, tradable? I don't think so. I don't either. I don't think so. I don't either. I, I, I think, think the Bruins are in a big, big, big problem here with Rask. Do think, you think that they? Do you think that they put Rask on waivers for the new team? I think um, – I personally I, feel I, that the Bruins need to bring in a new goaltender. That's I my think, thought. So, so what I think – Two new I mean, goaltenders. Halak has, Halak has another year on his contract. Um, I think – yeah, I mean, put Rask on waivers, keep him for a year. Uh, don't re-sign Halak after next year. Try to sign Holpe this year because he's a free agent. Uh, and then, and then after in the off season, next season after this upcoming season, you know, bring Rask back up to the team, and then see if Seattle will take him in the expansion draft. Because I personally think that Rask is not going to come back as a Bruin. I don't think he's checked out. I think that the Bruins are saying everything that, oh, yeah, he's coming back. Don't you worry. He's more focused than ever. I think they're just telling people that to give him some value so the Bruins can trade him. I like Rask. I do. But I think that he's, he's created such animosity amongst fans for whether he departed the team the right way or the wrong way. I just don't see him being able to come back from what happened this in this playoff. I don't. No, Whether it was right I, or wrong. And I'm a family I, person. Family comes first and all. But I think he's worn his welcome out with too many people here in Boston. Which is unfortunate. I mean, because he's, he's, he's an incredible goalie when he's on. But when he's not on, you don't, you don't want him in net for you. But like I said, so, Hope he's a free agent this year. So see if you can, you know, see if you can sign him. That'd be cool. I'd be cool with that. Um, mm. Has the window closed, though, with this championship team? No. You say that with reluctancy. I don't say that with reluctancy. I think with the core group, you have maybe one more year. But it's not like we don't have a decent team 
to be able to get back to the playoffs and make a run for it. Is Tory Krug back next year? I think that all depends on whether or not Chara retires. I think that all depends on this, the Tuka Rass situation. I think that – I mean, there's a lot of factors that play into that. Because I think he's gone. I think he's going to go and get the money. I don't think the Bruins are going to give it to him. And Krug had an interesting Instagram post with a picture over the Boston skyline last night, which some people can put two and two together that says goodbye, Boston. Thank you. But who knows? Well, um, he, he put out a tweet the other day, you know, a few days ago, too. I, I We could be reading too much into it, at least myself. I, mean, I could I like, be over speculating, but I, I don't think he's back. I mean, I like Krug, but at the same I like time, him too. We, we don't we don't really need him either. Uh, he's a he is a um, liability on the blue line at times because he's way too offensive for a defenseman at times. Yep. Um, so I it, he would be missed, but at the same time, it's not going to be a huge hole that they wouldn't be able to fill. The last thing I wanted to mention on the Bruins end is we, there was an award that was uh, given out yep. to Bruce Cassidy this week. He won the Jack Adams Trophy for Coach of the Year. And that is uh, an awesome thing for him. I like Cassidy. I am a Cassidy fan. I think you are the same with it. Cassidy is not the problem on this Bruins team. No, he is not. Nope. That's why, that's why I think that they – I don't think our championship is over. I think – he, he can help the team become a better, uh, more They got to get the job done in the playoffs. And right. one of those people capable, that I think – more capable team. And it, it, it's – I think – because, I mean, you look at what he – look at what the team did when – after Tuker left. You know, they go and win, what, three games? Two games? In a row. Right, in a row. And then – I don't know, something must have happened in the locker room or something, and they weren't able to turn around after that. But Well, I think the focus wasn't there from the start. I think what happened was the Bruins just weren't mentally prepared to go through the long haul in the bubble. I think that's what happened. I think some guys just were checked out. Pasta was a big problem, and I do have to say, as much as I like pasta, regular season performer, he has done nothing in the playoffs nothing so you know what if you get a good deal for it see you later it's a results business if you do not get the results at the biggest stage you're nothing goodbye yeah, but that, that's i mean you look at the roster and how many guys actually like perform better than they do in the regular season or about I mean, look at Krejci. Krejci produces all the time in the playoffs i mean he's right up there as one but of the he's, best he's ever really the only he's really the only one right now I think Bergeron deserves a lot of criticism for his uh, piss-poor performance in the playoffs, truthfully. Uh, Marshan I thought, was pretty good. But I think Mar that he Marchand got – he, he was too ticky-tacky again. He felt that he had to be too selfish with the puck. So he felt that he had to get too fancy at times, yeah. and that caused a lot of turnover. I thought Brandon Carlo's performance was the worst out of all the defenders on the team, to tell you the truth. I thought Carlo's performance was complete shit. I would give him a D. I, I mean, thought their top, I thought their top performer for D uh, for uh, defense was uh, McAvoy. I thought he had a hell of a playoff with some big hits. I thought Chara's was mediocre at best. Um, Clifton looked good. Um, Clifton had a better playoff than Carlo. I would I, say that. Honest, honestly, I completely forgot Grizzly was even a defenseman on the team. No, he didn't show up. Didn't so. show up. So. I thought, again, some stepped up, some didn't. The performance needed to be better. Looking at the rest of the NHL, it looks like Tampa is through to the next round. Is that correct? Uh, they're up 2-0 right now. They're, they're up 2-0 on the Islanders. Against the Islanders. Yep. And who is your expectation for Stanley Cup finals and winner? Up. Oh. Uh uh, Who are you pointing the, to? The team in the bottom left corner there on my screen. So that's Tampa. Tampa. Yep. And, and then uh, I think I think this team up here 
the stars at the bottom that you can barely make out at the top of my screen. Uh, I think the stars are going to pull out, pull out a win. You think, on so the, you think the stars are going to overtake Vegas? I think so. Okay. So stars They're, and Tampa. I think Tampa's going to win the whole thing. I don't know. Don't we'll know. see, though. We'll see, I, though. I, I don't know if they – I don't know if they have the energy to finish off the entire playoffs. We shall see. It shall be interesting on that note. I do want to change over to the NFL. Notice how I am skipping over baseball. Sorry. Wait, <laughs> baseball? That's still going on? I know. I just can't either. I want to talk about football because there's been a lot of hype about Cam Newton. He is your starter for the Patriots, the new quarterback and everything. And I'm still trying to get used to that. And I don't know if I'm 100% there yet. How about you? I don't know. I, there, I haven't been able to – there hasn't been any uh, anything to really no go preseason. off of. There's been no There's been no nothing. Yeah. Remember, there's none of that this year. So, there's, I think it's going to be a lot on. more – there's a lot more rust, I think, when it comes to what we're going to see in these first couple weeks here. But – from everything that we have heard from Belichick all the way down to players within the locker room and stuff is that well, Cam how can we been a leader. What, how can we believe what Belichick's doing? He's just busy eating subs now. It's true. He's, does, he's turned into the new uh, Happy Gilmore. But I, I want to like Cam Newton. It's not the fact that I don't like him. I want to like him. So I want him to give me every opportunity in the book because you know how important my opinions are on Twitter and everything. I want him to like, I want him to be good. I want him to be somebody that surprises us all. And I don't know if we're going to see an MVP out of Newton and all, but it sure seems like he's motivated, at least from what I've heard. What do you think? Well, first of all, we don't we don't need we don't need you getting blocked by Cam Newton on Twitter, but um, that's probably going to happen. So I mean, whatever. But I I mean, I yeah, I, I want him I want him to you know help this team be you know good. Uh, maybe not you know close to to what we we expect of this team. Uh, it's going to be a little tough. You know, not really having much of our defensive core this yeah. season, um, so it's it's uh, it's going to be a lot on uh, on the offense's shoulders. But um, I mean, we'll we'll see. There's, uh, I mean, a lot. There's a lot more football players missing from their teams this year than any other professional sport. I feel like yeah, it speaks so, a lot too. Yeah, how they're handling. So we'll it. we'll see. But yeah, I want to. I want to like him too. Um, it's going to add a lot to the playbook with him being a mobile quarterback. Um, maybe he's not as mobile as he used to be, but it's still going to add some more uh, creativity to the playbook. Yeah, uh, Phil, do you think the Patriots are actually going to be better this year versus last year? I don't know if they'll be better, but I mean, I think. There'll be, uh, I think Cam Newton will give them an opportunity to listen. I mean, it's uh, the Bell uh, this year might be just a year for assessment and for retooling or whatever. Uh, and oh, Newton might be better with the younger receivers or younger or you know, trash heap, whatever you want to call it, of receivers they have. Which I actually, well, we know, you know we had what? trash last year, we know that. Well, you know what? I like Jacoby Myers, I think he's great. I think he's actually a, a good young receiver, and I think, you know, from all the crap we heard last year about Tom Brady, and we kind of brushed it off because that's what we did. Uh, you know, maybe he scared off some of those receivers, and maybe Cam Newton is there to, you know, he's working with them, and there we'll see what happens. I mean, Sanu's gone, so that opens up some stuff. So you have, you know, don't have he, he's never really Cam Newton. I don't think he's ever really worked with a crazy uh, core of receivers. He's had Greg Olson. Uh, but other than that, as like a, a, a top tier tight end, I don't think he's really had anyone. Um, I think, well, maybe he's had one or two like decent receivers in this time. But, you know, I mean, I, 
like Tom said, I, I think it's going to open up the playbook a bit. I think Josh, uh, Josh McDaniels and Belichick will be able to play around with stuff. And I think it, it's going to be focused on, which has been the last couple of years, I think we've kind of gotten out of our head, uh, which is interesting because one of our offensive linemen, uh, key ones, won't be there. But the running game has been pretty much your strongest point of the last couple of years. Now, last year wasn't as good because uh, I forget what's his name, the center was out. And uh, I think he stepped out again he, because, you know, of COVID. Um, David Andrews. David Andrews. Yeah. yeah. But, you well, know, I what? know I know we do not have Dante Hightower, Patrick mm-hmm. Chung, David Andrews. Yeah. Uh, is Shaq Mason one player that we're out with too now? Uh, I don't know. I think he might be. Actually, that's a good question. He might not be. I think it might be another offensive lineman, though. I think you're right. Somebody, uh, Joe Tooney might be another player. Yeah, I think that was it. But, Is that it? I mean, it's yeah. like Tom said, it, it's crazy because the league, because of the way it is, because it's not in a bubble or doing anything else. And I think we had that discussion two shows ago. Yeah, we did. Like, why don't they, why didn't they just kind of like develop something like that? And it's kind of crazy because I think they're going to try to have, like college football is weirdly trying. They're trying to fill stadiums. They're still going to try to do all this BS with getting people there. And it's insane. It's like, it's just like, uh, no, and I don't mean like, oh, you know, you know, uh, people don't go. It's like, well, people are clamoring to go. And it's your responsibility as an adult not to allow these people in. Because, you know, you're just going to make things you work. Well, I, I tell you, one of the things that should be pretty standard across the board is, you know, us Americans, we have our rights of what we can do with our freedom. If you want to go to a stadium and you want to go sit there, that's fine. Sign this form, please. That releases any sort of penalty or anything that happens no, from what you do. But, but there go are, do your thing. That's not, but that's not the point. The point is, like, and that's a half measure, like, companies like uh, – and. Uh, teams like that are taking they're only going through the uh, legal uh, they're only elevating the legal risk or alleviating the legal risk they're not really addressing um you know the pandemic thing but uh, regardless i think well i heard i heard that you know they're gonna allow fans you know they have to be wearing their mask during the game unless they're you know drinking or eating something yeah which is, you know, which what, could be, which could be twenty four seven. No one's yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Have like I've, a, I've been to so, a game with one person on this show who does do that quite a bit, but I'm not naming names. So I think it's safe to say we're all pretty, we're stuff in our face. But uh, I was actually just eating some of my kids' little puff foods just in between, but they're very delicious. They're like cereal. <laughs> but uh, I just kind of had my oh these things. Let me. Uh, oh yeah, what were you, you were eating right before? Yeah, these things are great. I can't these see it. Great. It's, from, it's called the cereal school. Take it back to your face. Cereal yeah, school. It's too white. White. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Oh, no, no, Phil, um, Phil. If I said it's that. not white enough, that would be the problem. But yeah. uh, all no, all calls, not. all emails, all inquiries to Phil Healy. No. Phil Healy. <laughs> Um, no, I, I think it's, it's bizarre because it's like, we know it's just like that whole thing. You know, I was talking to my dad about this weird thing. Like colleges are like, Oh yeah, we're leaving up to college kids, not to old parties. I'm like, Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with Good that. Good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, if you're watching wow. news. People have been, college kids have been like, you know, hoarding people at parties. <laughs> yeah. They're just putting them in phone booths like the fifties. Uh, Ridiculous. No, I think the I think the Pats to get down to the core question again. I think the running game will be very important, and I think as Tom said, it'll be very uh, Newton will be very complimentary to that. And I don't, your passing game will be kind of like a byproduct. Um, well, I mean, it's gonna it's with you Newton got at, at, yeah with Newton at quarterback, it's gonna open the running game up so much more. Yeah, you're gonna have Edelman. You're gonna have Harry, Nikhil Harry, which is two years in. He should be okay. Yeah. You'll have Jacoby Myers out there. You'll have – Is it Gleb? Or no. Yeah. We still don't really have a tight end. Yeah. They have, like, the two rookie so, tight ends they got. Yeah. But, I, see, I, I still think they're going to have a better year than last year. And the reason I say that is from all the reports that we have heard said that Brady was just not anywhere close to being wanted to play football for the Patriots last year. Understandable. Yeah. That's, Understandable. That's about – you know, I, I, he, he created an atmosphere around there where he pouted, he complained, he wasn't getting what he wanted, so he didn't want to give back. That's why he wasn't around OTAs and getting young guys ready to go because he checked out. 
Yeah. You know, and that's one that's one flag that I have against Brady. As much as I love him, you know, as much as he's been such an idol here in Boston, you're still a professional athlete. I mean, you still got to go out there and do everything you can to win. And he just didn't do that, which is shocking to me. He'd rather stick it to Belichick and the Patriots for what he did. And let's be honest here. The only reason he's playing for teams is to stick it to the Patriots. It's the only thing he's – and to outplay till he's 45. You know, if, if he had any – if he didn't have that fire, he would have retired. Which makes me very interested to see what he does with Tampa. I am interested to see what happens there. I think that's going to be great. I think it's going to be fan- – like, because we don't play them at all, I don't think, this year. But it'll be nope. interesting to see how they handle things. There you go, Logan. Their Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is at the Buccaneer Stadium. So Weird. that's going to be bulletin board material for them. Oh, of course. And getting that Super Bowl back, you know, home with at, uh, with Tampa. So that would be – I would assume that that's what Brady is motivated to get right now too. And to prove to the Patriots that they never should have given up on him and he should still be with them. I think that that's bottom line on what he's trying to prove. Hey, we'll see. Anything else on the NFL? Uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, if you haven't gotten your um, fantasy, it's gonna be interesting. Set, put it together. I have to do it right after this. I forgot. I have not done my fantasy yet this year. I kind of really – I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not this year. We'll see. Um, the last thing I do want to talk about – I actually do want to talk about some baseball. I do want to talk about some baseball. I do actually want to talk about at least some things on the Red Sox front because it's all about the future and planning on what they look like next season down the road – who's a keeper on the team, who's somebody that you say bye-bye to. And I also want to give a shout-out to the San Diego – or excuse me, the Slam Diego Padres, who are a very exciting baseball team who I strongly suggest you giving a chance to watch because not only do they have some former Red Sox who you can root for, but they also have uh, my buddy, of course, Don Orsillo, who calls the games, and he's, he's dynamite, dynamite. It's true. Don is great. I was going to say one thing on the Don front is um, somebody had this up for a poll. I don't know if it was on Twitter or what, and I was in the past week. And they asked, what mistake under the Red Sox ownership was worse? Was it Lester departing and not resigning? Or was it Don Arcillo not being renewed? as an announcer with the Red Sox. And do you know what that poll said? Don Arcillo was, was more, more so should have been kept than Lester out of all of that. Shocking to me. The fans are not happy with what ownership did to Arcillo. And that happened five years ago. And people still, like myself, can't get over it. Well, get over it, buddy. Get I'm o- not getting over it. <laughs> He's never getting over it. But they're never, ever, ever getting back together. So, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. No, that marriage is over with. But you can enjoy you. his calls. You can enjoy his calls with the Padres anytime. Um, on the Red Sox front, uh, they are cruising to be the worst team in the league, which is okay by me because that could generate the first pick in the draft and all. But – over this the last month of so, a little bit less than a month, what are some things that you actually want to see on this Red Sox team as they depart on this 2020 season? Um, two kids in one uniform posing as a player, kind of trying, like any sort of weird hijinks or any like early 90s or mid 90s baseball movie. Like we signed a kid who had like elbow surgery or uh, shoulder surgery. Oh, rookie of the year. We want, the year. want Henry Roland Gardner. Let's put, put him in the pen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, rookie of the year. Try that. Any sort of like animal, sort of air bud uh, situation. Any like pull <laughs> all the tricks. Pull all the tricks. I want to hear them all. Just, I don't just think have them not left. even just have them not even show up to the game. Not even show just up. Just forfeit the, the rest of the year. Yeah. Or put the fan, the fake fans out there. Put just fake players the rest out of the there. Season. Yeah. 
because there's a few things on a serious note that I actually want to see. Hundred percent serious, but all right. And I'm gonna. I'll, I'll be serious on this. I want to see them lose every single rest of the game, every single rest of the game this year. Lose. Tank for uh, this kid who's Al Leiter's son. It's supposed to be phenomenal. You need pitching. Let's get this dude, please. Tank. I don't want to see another win the rest of the year. You might not. I hope not. It's a good chance. And it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing because this has never happened in my life where I am actually rooting for the Red Sox to lose every single game the rest of the year. It and is not. unbelievable. They, they could do it in a fantastic fashion, too. They could. They could. <laughs> just throw Matt Barnes in every single inning to just let him explode. Call him I hope he explodes player. and self-destructs right on the mound. Yeah. Just everyone, everyone bunt. Everyone bunt just, all the way. Just throw a play. Just throw a play. Just throw a position player on the. He mound can have his funeral right on the mound for all I care. We can play <laughs> taps for player. him as he departs. Yeah. Throw a position player out there. That's not a bad idea either. Now, looking ahead to next year. Now, we'll have the salary recap, the salary reset, salary cap reset, whatever the heck you want. They have, they'll have the ability to spend and, and get better in some sorts. What's on top of the priority list? What's got to get done? I mean, pitching. I mean, oh, management? Pitching. Who knows? I don't know. How, would you guys bring Alex Cora What's, back? What? Let's, <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there's nothing. Okay, I, I, oh, I yeah. would bring Cora back. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the top cheaters in the game. Bring him in. <laughs> I, I do love Cora. I do actually love him. All this, all you know, joking aside, I do think he's great. I think it looks promising for him to come back, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Red Sox got to figure out what they're going to do with Sale. Uh, Sale's coming off his surgery. Is Sale going to be a Anything close to being what he was in the rest of his career? I don't think so. I think it's going to go down as one of the worst contract extensions. I think the Red Sox need to figure out what's going to happen with Dustin Pedroia because I don't see them carrying that big-time salary over for next year. So it's either you're retired, you're coaching or something, but you're out of here. Done. Well, I'd um, as a coach. I think it'll be fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I think they have to figure out what they're going to do in center field. I think that Bradley's out of here. So I'm still shocked they didn't trade him because he's a free agent at the end of the year. So you're going to get absolutely nothing. I mean, maybe you weren't going to get anything for him in a trade. It's not surprising in the least to me. Uh, but it looks like your cornerstones will be Christian Vasquez, Bogarts, Verdugo, Devers, and J.D. Martinez, who will be here for next year, too, because there's no way he's opting out of his contract. So those players what, aside. What about Dahlbeck? What about I don't Dahlbeck? like him. I don't like him. And the reason I don't like him is I think he's another hack. Roger I think he's Dahlbeck? An, uh, Bobby Dahlbeck. Oh, or Brian Dahlbeck. Uh, Brian, I liked him. I liked yeah. Brian Dahlbeck back well, in the day. The dirt dog. This is, this is Dal, Bobby Dahlbeck. Dahlbeck, D-A-L-B-E-C. I don't, I don't like the guy. I think he's tradable. I think he's got a huge swing. He'll hit a lot of home runs. But I think he's an Adam Dunn type. He's going to hit a buck 90. He's going to strike out 300 times in a year. I don't have any patience for that. I'm sorry. I don't. I think Michael Chavis Shocking. is another guy. I think Michael Chavis is another guy that they need to say see you later to. I think he is nothing but a big swing and a miss type guy that they, they don't need it. I want contact. I want guys that are going to hit 280, 300, whatever it is. Get on bait, hit, hit a bunch of doubles, have about 20 homers, score runs. I don't need strikeouts and crap like that. So my outlook on the team next year is they damn well better be better than this year because if they aren't, my I am done. I can't I can't do it anymore with the Sox. At least the Yankees aren't winning the division this year. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, that three hundred and twenty-five million for thirteen years for Garrett Cole looks like an absolute disgrace of a contract. So good, good stuff, Yankees. Keep on spending. He agrees. <laughs> we'll any other final? Time. Any other final things that we want to talk about before that go, we wrap we knew up that our going show in. today? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I hope hope we see the the Celtics in the conference uh, finals. Me too. Conference Me finals. Too. I want to be wrong. And I am looking forward to an LA, LA Western Conference Finals because it's never happened before. 
And okay, it's, cool. it's, it's a shame it's happening. I mean, the bubble is great. All the games in the bubble have been pretty great, even the, the crappy ones. But uh, it's a shame it's not happening at the Staples Center where people it will is. still all root for the Lakers because they don't know what else to do. They don't. No. Truth but truth. We speak the truth only here. Yeah. Uh, any final things, Tom? Uh, no, just, just go Celtics. Go Celtics. I like it. For once. All right. Thank you all for joining us today on another virtual episode of Face the Facts. We will join you next time to hopefully talk about Eastern Conference Finals with the Celtics as they get ready for the Miami uh, uh, Miami box, the Miami Heat. Jeez, my day today. We will see you again next time. I am Nick Face. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>